Question 27. A water wave is diffracted as it passes through a gap between two barriers in a ripple tank. Now the key word here, number one, is diffraction. Number two, pass through two barriers in a gap in a ripple tank. Okay, I draw. So it's a bit like you have the gap. Okay, if you need some ripple tank uh, experiments, you want to see them because you've never seen them before because what is COVID-19? Uh, there are quite a few good ones, not perfect ones, but good ones on YouTube. Like you can search them. Okay, so when you pass through the gap, okay, let's say this is the um, area of the gap right here. Only I draw this just to show if there's no spreading, then uh, the wave will pass through this way. Notice that the wavelength didn't change, or I try to maintain the same wavelength. So lambda constant. Uh. Okay, but because there is spreading, you expect some uh, shape that looks like this. Lo. We'll spread outwards, something like this. Okay, so which two factors, like a wave is observed to spread out as it moves through the gap, which two factors both affect the amount of diffraction observed. So this is a standard one. Let's say I want to have more diffraction. What I could do is I could change the wave or change the gap size. Um, let me highlight the gap size for you. This distance is your gap size, size of the hole. So here to here, let's say this is A. A is gap size. Okay, so what will affect the amount of diffraction? Number one, gap size or the width of the gap. So if I see width of the gap, I'm happy to choose it. Number two, it will be the wavelength. Because when I say the gap size should be small, the, the good question will be, how small is small? Well, uh, it should be around the order of the wavelength. Okay, so instead of me drawing, I will go and find a handy dandy diagram from the interwebs and you can see from this drawing that if the gap is small, there is more spreading. Okay, so small gap here to here is A. Here to here is A. More diffraction. This one, greater diffraction. Okay, so your A should be more or less equal to lambda. So if you look at this gap size, it is around the same width as the wavelength. How do you know wavelength? Wavelength would be the gap between these lines. So let me zoom in a bit. If you look at the line, the gap between here to here and the distance between here to here, they are comparable. So when I say more or less equal, I don't mean have to be the number in front. I mean same order. 10 to the power of the same number. Okay. So for example, if it's 10, if it's light, then it should be nanometer. Lo. The gap size should be nanometer. Okay. So this one, this is less diffraction. Because the gap size is bigger than lambda. Okay. So what can we change? Wavelength of the incident wave and the width of the gap. So this is the idea of diffraction. Uh, for good diffraction pattern or good spreading, you want good spreading like this, a must be close to lambda, same order. Lah. Maybe this is four nanometer, 400 nanometer, maybe lambda is 600 nanometer or 800 nanometer. Those are okay. All right. And the larger the gap, the less the spreading. It doesn't spread that much. Okay. How, how, do you, how can you tell? You can always draw this dotted line and see. No? This is the spread. This is the area of the spreading. Uh, see if I can shade it. This is the area of the spreading, not so much. If you draw a dotted line here, okay, let me zoom in a bit. If you draw a dotted line here, this is the area of the spreading. Wow, a lot. 
So this is more diffraction. Okay, this part here a little bit, this is less. Okay, so the only thing that will affect the diffraction would be wavelength. Should be same order as the gap of the width. The gap of the width, the width of the gap. Well, that's it for this question.